Nikki Strong, and this is VOA One The Hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Coming up on the program, Brian Lynn brings us the technology report on U.S. libraries struggling to pay for costly digital books. Later, Andrew Smith and Jill Robbins present the lesson of the day. But first, Gregory Stockel reports on an increase in marriages in South Korea. The number of marriages in South Korea rose in 2023 for the first time in more than 10 years. The increase came after the pandemic, which forced some couples to delay marriage plans. But the data did not point to a continued increase in the aging country. The small rise in marriages last year comes as its fertility rate continued to decrease. South Korea's fertility rate, or the average number of children born per woman, is already the world's lowest. It is falling because women are concerned about their careers, the cost of raising children, or are deciding not to have babies. Government data showed a total of 193,657 couples got married last year. That is up 1.0% from 191,690 a year earlier. It is the first increase since 2011. That compares with a 0.4% drop in 2022. That was when South Korea started to ease restrictions on social gatherings put in place during the COVID-19 pandemic. The restrictions saw the number of marriages decrease 9.8% in 2021 and 10.7% in 2020. The 2023 number of marriages, however, remains well below the 239,159 marriages seen in 2019, and that compares to a yearly number of more than 320,000 recorded 10 years earlier. A government official said that couples delaying marriage was a reason for more marriages in the second half of 2022 and the first half of 2023. In the second half of 2023, however, marriages fell year on year indicating that people who had been delaying marriage due to COVID-19 have now mostly got married, the official told reporters. The 2023 increase was also well below the increases seen in nearby China. Marriages in China rose 12.4% last year. That happened as more couples got married after delays caused by the pandemic. Most South Koreans say high housing costs are the biggest reason for getting married. Many also see marriage as the first step before having a baby in the Asian country. The Onhap News Agency reported a recent study of 500 South Koreans aged between 19 and 23. It showed that 50.4% of those asked did not plan on getting married or having children. 
The government says it will take extraordinary measure to deal with the low birth rate. Political parties are promising public housing and easier loans for young South Koreans ahead of the April legislative election. Marriages with a foreign national greatly increased for a second year, increasing 18.3% to 19,717. I'm Gregory Stockel. A growing number of American libraries are struggling to offer users digital versions of books because they cost a lot more than physical copies. Public demand for digital materials, including books called e-books as well as audiobooks, has been rising at U.S. libraries since the COVID-19 pandemic. But libraries have had difficulties meeting demand. This has forced many librarians to put users on waiting lists to borrow digital materials. Associated Press AP reporters recently spoke with library officials about the problem. One library they visited was in the community of West Haven, Connecticut. There, library workers noted big cost differences between physical and digital books. Most libraries are currently not permitted to buy e-books for a set price, like individuals who purchase them online. This is because libraries offer the books to many people to borrow. One example is a work by best-selling writer Robin Cook. A physical hard copy version of Cook's latest book costs the West Haven Library eighteen dollars to buy. The AP reports, but the cost of leasing a digital copy of the same book costs the library fifty-five dollars. Library officials told the AP. Lease prices are set by book publishers and generally cannot be renegotiated. Such leasing agreements end after a limited use. Usually, this means the lease lasts for up to two years, or until it has been borrowed a set number of times. The cost of the lease is putting financial pressure on libraries. Officials at West Haven Library told the AP they do not have a large budget, but they said they had to spend more than twelve thousand dollars over the past three years to lease two hundred seventy-six additional digital books that were not available within a larger library network. The officials said eighty-four of those books were no longer available. And they noted that if the same twelve thousand dollars had been spent on paper books, the amount would have paid for about eight hundred copies. Imagine if a playground was built at a school with tax dollars, only to be taken down after two years of use. Librarian Colleen Bailey said at a recent public hearing on the issue. Publishers say their agreements with libraries are fair. They say that while libraries pay a higher lease rate, they can make the books available to many users over time. 
Librarians in several states have been pushing for legislation to reduce high costs and restrictions on digital materials. This year, lawmakers in Connecticut, Massachusetts, Illinois, Hawaii, and New Hampshire all proposed bills aimed at lowering costs. But the measures have faced strong opposition from the publishing industry. The industry argues the proposals do not effectively respect intellectual property owned by copyright holders and would harm the publishing businesses. Libraries Online Inc. is a digitally connected library group operating in Connecticut. The organization says it currently spends about twenty thousand dollars a month on ebooks for its thirty-eight members. The cost of renewing expired ebooks takes about twenty percent of the group's budget. Ebook committee chair Rebecca Harlow told the AP, "If we replaced all of the content that has expired this year." The cost would exceed our entire annual budget for e-books, Harlow recently told lawmakers. We have completely lost the ability to build a library collection, she added. In Illinois, a legislative proposal would cancel contracts between libraries and publishers that include certain rules. These include restricting a library's right to decide loan periods for licensed electronic material. Massachusetts and Connecticut are considering similar proposals. Last year, groups representing publishers, booksellers, and writers formed a group, the Protect the Creative Economic Coalition, to oppose state measures. But Julie Holden, assistant library director for the Cranston Public Library in Rhode Island, said she thinks legislative action is needed. Otherwise, local librarians will continue to face financial pressure, and will need to keep examining long lists of expiring digital leases to decide which ones can be replaced. Holden added. Taxpayers who fund our public libraries deserve better, way better. I'm Brian Lynn. Brian Lynn joins me now to talk more about his technology report. Thanks again for being here, Brian. Of course, Dan. Thank you for having me. This week, you looked at the struggles facing American libraries that must pay higher costs for e-books and other digital materials. How widespread does this problem seem to be across the U.S.? Yes. So the experts quoted in the report suggest the issues explored are very common to library systems across the country, and some library officials who spoke to the Associated Press. Said the financial strains can be particularly difficult for smaller libraries,、um, but as explained in the report, the increased leasing costs for e-books definitely seems to be affecting most libraries, and many of them say that without change, they simply won't be able to provide as many e-books and audio books going forward, or they may have to stop purchasing as many paper books. The report pointed out that the demand for e-books and audio books increased during the COVID-19 pandemic. Is this demand still rising? Yes, that certainly does seem to be the case. One report by an online digital provider I found estimated that readers across the world borrowed 662 million e-books, audio books, and digital magazines in 2023. Um, now that number was up 19 percent from 2022, the company said,、um, and the report came from a major provider of digital content to public libraries and schools. All right, thanks again for joining me, Brian. You're welcome. Thank you, Dan.
Hello, my name is Anna Mateo. And my name is Jill Robbins. And I'm Andrew Smith. You're listening to the Learning English Podcast. Welcome to the part of the show where we help you do more with our series, Let's Learn English. The series shows Ana Mateo in her work and life in Washington, D.C. To be or not to be in Washington, D.C.? That is an easy question for Ana to answer. Ana loves being in Washington because it gives her the opportunity to do a lot of special things. Andrew, are you quoting William Shakespeare, the famous English playwright? Of course I am. To be or not to be is probably the most famous line from all of Shakespeare's plays. And in lesson 13 of Let's Learn English, Anna, who loves the theater, is excited. And that's because she gets to do and see some unusual things at an unusual party. That's right. Anna gets to visit a special birthday party for William Shakespeare. And it's an unusual party because Shakespeare died more than 400 years ago in the year 1616. Well, people still celebrate his life especially at the Folger Library in Washington, D.C., which has the world's largest collection of Shakespeare's works. That's where Anna was lucky to find this birthday party for Shakespeare. Let's listen. What is going on here? It's a big birthday party for the writer William Shakespeare. This is a party for William Shakespeare? Yes! Awesome! Awesome! I think awesome is one of Anna's favorite words. She uses it a lot. Yeah, so do a lot of people in the United States. In American English, awesome just means really good or enjoyable. And this birthday party is awesome for Anna because it lets her see and do things she does not usually see or do. You could say it's an unusual day for Anna. It's a most unusual time, it's a most unusual day, it's quite bizarre, it's super odd, it's strange in every way. I guess that's our unusual theme music for today's podcast. But now, let's listen to the things Anna gets to hear, see, or do at the birthday party. This is a drum band. I never listen to a drum band. But today, I am listening to a drum band because it's Shakespeare's birthday. Throw briar over park, over pail. Throw blood, throw fire. This is a puppet show. I never watch puppet shows. But today, I am watching a puppet show because it's Shakespeare's birthday. My clothes are usual. His clothes are unusual. In Washington, D.C., seeing a politician or even the president is usual. Seeing the Queen of England is very unusual. Your Majesty. I never sword fight, but today I am sword fighting because it's Shakespeare's birthday. Sword fighting is pretty unusual these days. I know I've never tried it. Me neither. But in some of the plays Shakespeare wrote, it's normal to see a sword fight. Now let's review what Anna saw and what she did at the birthday party. First, she listened to a drum band. This is a drum band. I never listen to a drum band. But today, I am listening to a drum band because it's Shakespeare's birthday. Second, she watched a puppet show. Throw briar over park, over pail. 
This is a puppet show. I never watch puppet shows, but today I am watching a puppet show because it's Shakespeare's birthday. After that, she saw a man dressed in clothes from Shakespeare's time. That looks unusual today. My clothes are usual. His clothes are unusual. Next, she meets someone dressed like Queen Elizabeth the First of England, who was queen during Shakespeare's time. In Washington D.C., seeing a politician or even the president is usual. Seeing the Queen of England is very unusual. Your Majesty. And listeners, what's last? You got it. The sword fight. This is sword fighting. I never sword fight, but today I am sword fighting because it's Shakespeare's birthday. I think the sword fight and the people dressed in old styles of clothes are the most unusual things Anna saw. You could say they're not normal. They're strange, bizarre, weird, different, out of the ordinary, odd, novel, atypical, curious, rare, unexpected, and I think that list of words might have been unexpected for our listeners. It's a most unusual time. It's a most unusual day. It's. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. We have more to explain to our listeners. Oh right. Sorry about that. I'm Andrew Smith, and you're listening to the Learning English podcast. There are many words in English that mean the same or almost the same thing as other words. We call these similar words synonyms. Andrew and I gave eleven synonyms for the word unusual. Now we're going to say them one more time, but pay close attention because we're going to say them very quickly, and we're going to add one more for a total of twelve synonyms. Are you ready, Andrew? Ready. Strange. Bizarre. Abnormal. Weird. Different. Out of the ordinary. Odd. Novel. Atypical. Curious, rare, unexpected. That was fast, but our listeners can have fun listening to that part of the podcast again to try to understand all twelve words. We should also explain that one of those synonyms is actually four words connected together with hyphens, or the small line between words you sometimes see when you are reading English. That's right. The synonym was out of the ordinary. Those four words, out of the and ordinary, get connected into what sounds like one big word, out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary simply means not ordinary, which means not normal, unusual, odd, atypical, rare. Okay. Okay. Stop. I think our listeners get the idea about synonyms. <laughs> I think they do too, but it's good to know how English can use synonyms to express an idea in many ways. That's true. Sometimes it's also good to know which synonyms are used most commonly to express a particular idea. But this can be difficult for people learning English. Yeah, they might need to ask a native speaker which words are commonly used, and which words are rarely used, or used only in certain kinds of communication. And even with two common synonyms like the words usual and normal, there can be a difference in how often the words are used. For example. Some language databases show that native speakers of American English. Use the adjective "normal" about twice as often as the adjective "usual." Hmm, that's interesting. And that word "interesting" makes me think of another important thing from Lesson Thirteen of Let's Learn English. 
In the beginning of the episode, Anna said she was bored. But today, I feel bored. When I feel bored, I always look for something unusual to do. But after going to the birthday party, she says she is no longer bored. There are many things to do in Washington, D.C. Some usual, some unusual. Today, I am not bored because it is William Shakespeare's birthday. Well, that means the party was not boring. Exactly. Instead, it was interesting or maybe even exciting. If it were boring, then Anna would still be bored. Ah, uh, okay. I see what you are trying to explain to our listeners. We use ED, like with the word bored, to describe our feelings inside. But ING, like boring, to describe things we see or perceive. So that means Anna would probably not say, I'm boring. That's correct. If she said, I'm boring, that means she thinks other people do not find her interesting in any way. It would be uh, very unusual for a person to say, I'm boring. It would be atypical. Or out of the ordinary. A bit odd. Or maybe just an English mistake. So, please, listeners, do not say that you are boring. But it's okay to feel bored from time to time. Jill, how are you feeling? Uh, oh, um, I'm not bored, <laughs> but I am a bit tired. Thinking of all these synonyms can be tiring. Yeah, but it's fun, too. Hey, I have an idea to keep you awake. Uh-oh, I see you grabbing your guitar. Are you going to play your unusual theme music again? You guessed it. But first, I want to tell our listeners that there's even more they can learn from Lesson 13 of Let's Learn English. And we will explain those things in another podcast soon. Oh, boy. <laughs> And they can learn more on our website, learningenglish.voanews.com. They can also find us on YouTube and Instagram. And thanks for listening to the Learning English Podcast. I'm Jill Robbins. And I'm Andrew Smith. It's a most unusual time. It's a most unusual day. It's quite bizarre. It's super odd. It's strange in every way. It's a most unusual time. It's a most unusual day. My mind keeps wondering what to think when colors smell like rain. I've heard the strangest things today, like words that rhyme with oranges. And so I think I'll sit right back and watch the world. It's weird and strange in every way. And that's our program for today. Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. <laughs>